So today we're going to look at going back to number lines, but this time we're multiplying a fraction by a fraction. As a warm up, I want you to pause the video and see if you can answer this question. Reina was trying to find the product of 2 fifths times 3 sevenths using patty paper, the squares, and shading like we've been doing. She drew the picture below and says the answer is 2 out of 35. How did she get this answer and is she correct? Uh, this is a mis misconception that I saw from quite a few of us. So if we start to look at and break down the fractions, we have 2 fifths times 3 sevenths. And here we can see the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and they shaded 3 parts. So that part we could check off as correct. And then we can see that Reina sectioned it into five parts here, but then because she saw the two fifths, she only shaded in this piece and this piece. And when we start to look at it being a fifth of the square, we have to think about the fact that they actually have to shade all the way across, and that would be two fifths of the square. So in reality, our solution should be this whole piece there, in which case it should be 6 out of 35. So the misconception that we're seeing is that because it just says 2 in the numerator for that second fraction, we're just finding an answer as 2. So another one for you, go ahead and pause the video and see if you can figure out on your own what multiplication sentence or problem would go along with each picture. Like I've told you before, I always suggest starting either vertically or horizontally. So if we look horizontally here, we can see that there is one, two, three, four sections that the square has been split into. So our denominator is four, and that they shaded three of those four. And now if we look horizontally, we can see one, two, three sections here, and that they shaded one of those three sections. So it would be three fourths times one third, which would give us a total of three twelfths that was shaded. All right, if you didn't pause it yet, I would pause it and see if you can figure out the second one. So here we have one, two, three, three sections, two of which are shaded. And then we can start to look one, two, three, four, five, six sections. And when they did it, they did five out of the six. So we get an answer of 10, 18 if we were to continue those lines across. Hopefully you're feeling pretty comfortable with the shading process and so now we're just going to give us another way to look at these problems um, as we start to work into more efficient strategies. Here each block, block along Helena Avenue is one half mile long. I ran five blocks yesterday and I want to know how I can use the number line to find the total number of miles that I ran. So we're going to think about kind of that double number line. So at the bottom we can see the miles, right, and on the top we can almost think of it as the number of blocks that were run. We know that each block is one half mile long. So what I would suggest doing is actually changing our sentence, right, or our number line and focusing more on the fact that each block is one half mile. So if she ran five blocks, she's running five halves, right? So if we're thinking multiplication sentence, we have five times one half or five groups of one half. So here we'd have one block, two blocks, three, four, and five. So as she starts to run each block, we would see that she would get 
response of two and a half miles that she ran. Now we've done a lot of stuff with um, fractions times whole numbers and stuff using number lines, but let's actually look at an example where we have a fraction times a fraction. I wasn't feeling the best in the, um, this morning during my run, so I stopped after running only three-fourths of a block. If each block is one-half mile long, I want to know how far did I run this morning. And we're going to use the number line to help show our thinking. So one thing I want us to stop and pause is ask ourselves, do we run more than a half mile or less? Um, so in this sentence, we're running three-fourths of a block, and each block is one-half mile long. Uh, so if we look at that, since our whole that we're looking at, like we were with our whole numbers, our unit is one-half mile, and if we're running less than one, then we're running less than a half mile. So what I'm going to do... I'm going to section off, kind of like we did before, but in this case, one half is going to be our largest, and that's going to be our unit. And we're running three fourths of that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to section this into fourths. Now the difference is here, if we were to take this and actually continue our number line to a mile, we'd have to section it, remember, into the same size pieces. And that actually helps us then look at the problem because when I do the three-fourths of a block, so remember this was one block, when I look at three-fourths, I now I have to actually count. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight pieces. So here we end up running three eighths of a mile. All right, so if you didn't quite get that, let's kind of look at another problem just so you can see another example. So here we have Chase walks down Old Shakopee Road and each block is a quarter of a mile long. Chase stops walking after two thirds of a block. We want to know how far he walked. So notice what we're going to do is we're going to use 0 and 1 because we want to look at the full mile as a unit to try and figure out the distance. But then we have to look, since it says each block is a quarter of a mile, we're going to break up our number line into those quarters. So this would be 1 fourth of a mile, 1 half, 3 fourths. And then if we start thinking blocks, this would be one block, two blocks, three blocks, four blocks. So all I'm doing is kind of defining what everything means. So if you look here, to walk a mile, he'd have to walk four blocks because each block is a quarter of a mile long. Now what we're going to do is we're going to focus in on that part of a part. because so we're going to focus in on the part of a block. Because we chase walk, stopped after only walking two thirds of a block, so we didn't even walk a full block. So now I'm going to section this because it's two thirds into that smaller part. But because I want to create equivalent fraction across, I'm going to also break each other block, and then when I'm looking, I can actually see that there's three pieces here three pieces here, three pieces here, three pieces here. So when I take my one-fourth of a mile, and I'm only running two-thirds of that, I can see that there's 12 total pieces because there's three the four times. And now because he ran two-thirds of a block, I'm going over two spots, so it's really two twelfths of a mile. And then as we already said, we have the four blocks that fit in one mile. 
So this may or may not be for you. I highly encourage you to try it. It's just another way to look at the fractions. The big thing is to remember that, like, in the context of it, you want to, even though we're doing a part of a part, you have to think about, like, that entire square or that entire unit. And so our unit's still one, even though we're looking at smaller pieces along the way.